Hey folks, welcome to a quick video where I want to go over the history behind the movie Flags of Our Fathers. Now, what you need to know about this movie before we actually start watching it is that this was a companion film produced in 2006. It was made to be like the twin movie to Letters from Iwo Jima, which we will also watch clips of this week. Now, we're going to keep our unit going on World War II, but... Clint Eastwood produced this movie with a different focus um, of the Battle of Iwo Jima, this side from the American so uh, perspective and surrounding the soldiers who are primarily captured or who we think are primarily captured in this critical photo. If you haven't seen this photo, you should know about it because it is a, it's one of the most important photos taken during the war just because of the consequences of what happens after. Two days after uh, Rosenthal, this pretty well-known uh, pho uh, photographer of the war effort, Two days after he takes this photo, it's going to be plastered all over the headlines of major newspapers all across America, and it's going to be used to try to justify why Americans should continue buying huge volumes of war bonds um, to keep paying for the war effort. It also created an idea that, or this, this perception that, hey, this is the first flag that was flown over official Japanese soil, so we should see the uh, victory over Japan the next few, next few weeks even, um, some people thought. However, it wouldn't be till six months, which is definitely a long time in a war, um, six months after the photo was taken that America could safely say, yeah, we've defeated the Japanese, the Japanese have surrendered. In this photo, you can see six soldiers there that are raising the flag over the soil. In class, we'll talk about how this could be symbolic of different things, why this could be used as a really important uh, photo. But these six soldiers are going to be treated as heroes and receive a lot of praise, more so over the other members of the company who are also there helping them. Um, and the photo is going to generate and give them a lot of praise. Now, there's been a lot of confusion about who's actually in the photo over many, many years. It wasn't until 2013 and 2016 that the U.S. Marine Corps actually officially said, we believe these six individuals are the actual men presented in the photo. Why is that important? Because for a long time, including the movie you're about to get, you're going to see, they're going to have the wrong people supposedly setting up the flag. Now, other things you should know. In 1945, the U.S., uh, along with other allies, are quickly moving up the Pacific. Um, we are trying to get as close to the Japanese mainland as possible, but we've engaged in a series of uh, a strategy of island hopping, meaning we'll overtake only the strategic islands that Japan has conquered uh, in the years preceding 1945. And we'll take photos of Americans basically bombing the island. Then we'll take photos of Americans arriving on the beachhead, basically launching an invasion. And then usually a lot of Americans would see photos of people raising the flag, the American flag over these islands to symbolize victory. Our strategy of island hopping was proven to be very successful, but we'd off because we'd often like confuse the Japanese and we'd make them think that we we're going for other islands, but we'd only go for the key strategic ones. We wanted Iwo Jima because Although there's not much there in terms of resources, it was it was strategically close enough to Japan and it's the mainland that we could launch bombers from Iwo Jima and still make it back. Like the bombers could go bomb on a bombing mission and then could travel back to Iwo Jima without losing too much fuel. Um, with this, one of the things you should mention, or I should mention, is that this flag was actually not the first one that was raised in this spot. A group of so earlier soldiers, which helps explain the confusion, a group of earlier soldiers had come by and actually raised a flag or lifted it up. However, that photo was seen as too small, so the commanding officers of the company had basically ordered that a much larger photo, uh, flag had, uh, would be raised. And so this is the second flag that's raised over that spot by by soldiers who were, we were confused about until about 2016. And some some people still see there's even some more confusion. With that, the only other thing that I'll mention in terms of the historical context is what you, uh, is what you, is what you should see in the photo here. Um, war bonds, if you don't know anything about bonds, this is how the government pays for a lot of stuff when taxpayer dollars aren't enough. War bonds were a critical uh, part of the U.S. government paying for the war effort, including uh, paying for personnel like soldiers and other employees of the government, as well as paying for equipment, weapons, any material needed to actually, find, uh, actually run the war effort. So what a bond says is that if I, give, if I sell you this piece of paper that says 100 on it, you give me 100 bucks, and in 10, 20 years, however, however long the, this particular bond would say, 
if you come to a bank and you try to redeem that note, I pinky promise to pay you $100 back as well, um, along with interest, uh, extra money that I'm going to pay you back just for the, the convenience of having your money right now. So a lot of investors actually will buy bonds because it's a safe investment from the U.S. government because the U.S. government never defaults on its payments. If it did, it would have that would be really, really bad um, for us. But... War bonds are going to be a critical part of how America will pay for the war effort while also promising investors that, hey, we'll give you your money back along with extra uh, when you finally cash it in. Now, as for the actual characters in the movie, um, you will see three major characters, John Doc Bradley, Ira Hayes, and Rennie Gagnon. These three guys are going to be presented to us as people who actually put the photo of the, the flag up. However, there's been some confusion even after the movie was created. So, John Doc Bradley is going to be uh, considered in the film as part of the first, the second group that raised the second flag. In 2016, 2013, the Marine Corps is going to actually say no. He was actually part of the first group that raised the first flag, not the second. So he was not in the actual photo that you saw a few slides ago. He in the movie though is going to be presented as part of that group that raised the that raised the flag in the photo, and he's going to go on a critical uh, bond or a, a critical tour around the United States to try to sell war bonds. He's going to go with Rennie, who is kind of seen as this kind of controversial figure because in some ways he's a womanizer, some ways he's seen as a as a a man in a critical relationship. But he's going to be a celebrity all throughout the United States along with the other two guys he goes with, and his goal is to try to sell as many war bonds for the Treasury Department. Hank Hansen is another soldier in the company. The biggest thing you need to know about him, besides the fact that he actually passes away in the real fighting, is that he is mistakenly uh, mistaken originally to be one of the men in the the, the uh, official flag or the official photo that raises the flag. Ira Hayes is a native. He is going to be the recipient of a lot of discrimination from even soldiers that he fights alongside with. But he is actually undoubtedly, undoubtedly the one of the original six members in that photo. So he's going to get praise and credit for that. However, the trauma and PTSD from what he sees on Iwo Jima in real life is going to lead him to become addicted to alcohol. And all throughout the tour in the movie, you're going to see him continually get into bouts of drinking. Um, he's going to have emotional fits. And it's just him trying to uh, to process what happened. But a lot of in, in 1945, not a lot, not a lot was known about PTSD or even how to treat veterans who came home with PTSD. So after he kind of falls off the map after the tour, the three soldiers that go together don't want to see each other, and he kind of works a series of odd jobs, uh, rotating in between an odd job in prison. And unfortunately, he has a kind of a a solitary death even after he had done these things in Iwo Jima. Corporal Harlan Block, who is in the movie, he dies in the fighting, but he is actually one of the original members of the six soldiers that actually raised the flag. So is Sergeant Michael Strank. Um, in the movie, he will die in the fighting, specifically leading part of a platoon, platoon to um, try to get rid of the Japanese forces on the island. Franklin Sousley, Sousley is also part of the six Marines who are on the fa uh, uh, flag raising photo. He will die. In fact, you'll see Ira, Rennie, and also John uh, Doc Bradley lament. They'll talk to his parents, and they'll talk about how he was a soldier and that he he was the best of them and that he had a lot of great qualities that they wish they were able to replicate. In real life, Private First Class Keller, Herod Keller is actually – in the photo, but he's not in the film. At that point in 2006, we didn't fully know that he was in the in the actual photo. The real individual dies in 1979 out, out of a heart attack, um, and he went years without talking about how he was actually in the photo, even though he probably knew he was. Same thing with Private uh, First Class Harold Schultz. He dies of another heartbreak, but he died uh, sorry heart attack excuse me in 1995, and he also never discussed that he was part of that photo. Captain Severance is a minor character in the film. He starts off the movie as an older guy kind of going over the history of the photo because some of the uh, some grandchildren of the actual people in the photo or people who are credited with being the photo will actually write a book called Flags of Our Fathers, which the movie's based off of. Captain Severance uh, is the leading officer in charge of the company that that he sends him up the mountain to go raise the flag. However, he's not much 
there's not much development to him as a character besides him telling the story and basically accounting for what happened to the soldiers. Ralph Iggy Ignatowski, he's another member of the company. He dies in the fighting, but he's uh, known more so for uh, being a close friend of John Doc Bradley. He's captured by the Japanese and he's tortured. He actually was in real life. In the movie, you'll see Doc Bradley having flashbacks to trying to find Ignatowski and then trying to figure out or trying to deal with the fact that he sees his mutilated body a few days after the fact. Bud Gerber is another minor character in the film, but you'll see him pop up. He's responsible for basically taking care of these three guys, giving them lodging, overseeing the logistics, um, handling all the the necessary advertising for the war bond campaign. And in the movie, he makes some false claims about how the Treasury Department in real life at that time was uh, running out of money. But in reality, every time the U.S. government did a war bond drive, it, it kept getting more and more money because Amer- Americans overall were – willing to sacrifice millions of dollars to help pay for the war effort. Not every American felt that way, but for those that bought the bonds, they felt that way. Now, if you have any questions about the movie, or if you want to discuss the photo or war bonds in general, feel free to reach out to me. I hope you're having a great week, and I look forward to seeing you in class.